Welcome to this presentation of MyBell Developments. This is a new way for you to consider investing in real estate. It consists of purchasing properties, creating site plan approval for a multifamily building, creating additional value on the site through this process, and then selling it to builders for a profit. I've been a licensed realtor since 2005, and in the last year, I've created a really fantastic business model for my investor clients, and I'd like to share that with you. This is as much a business pitch to you as it is just a simply a presentation of an idea. I am looking for clients. I am looking to build new relationships. So if you're interested in this opportunity at the end of the presentation and you'd like to work with me, my contact information is available in the description below, and you can find me on my website at myottawaagent.com. So this is a business proposal for you and for anyone that you might like to partner with as an investor. Uh, if you are a real estate agent, this is an opportunity for you as well to tap into your existing and past client book and see if there might be anybody that would like to do new business with you. Uh, if you're interested in finding out what sort of incentives and commission opportunities are available to you as a realtor, I'll put a separate video of that together for you with a link in the description below. But you can also find the information on my website under mybelldev.com. At the bottom of the page in the Q&A section, there's some information about the commission sharing opportunities if you're a realtor. So before I dive into the meat and potatoes of the proposal, I would like to win your confidence. So let me just lay out a little bit of information about my background and my career. Um, I am a licensed realtor since 2005. My name is Mitch Gauzes. I work primarily in the Ottawa region and Eastern Ontario, and I've served on the board of directors as the director of commercial real estate at the Ottawa Real Estate Board in 2020. It's an elected position. Um, I was happy to volunteer and serve um, the members here and uh, participate on the board of directors at that time. Um, I have also served as the chair of commercial services committee. And in prior years, I was uh, enjoyed working on the MLS task force where we revamped some of the input information on the commercial side for the MLS system and uh, made some improvements that way. Um, if you want more information about my background, you can visit my LinkedIn profile. The link is here on the page and you can get to know me a little bit better on my website. Okay, and on with the show. Okay, let's get into this. So we're talking about a specific business model for you to invest in what's called site plan approval projects. It entails buying property that's producing income where the zoning is really good that allows us to build a bigger project than what's currently on the site. So I'm gonna to talk to you quickly about what a site plan is. You may or may not be familiar with it, but I'll just show you briefly what it is. I'll talk to you about why builders are interested in purchasing these opportunities. We'll go through the reasons why you would want to invest in this opportunity in this type of model. I'll show you a case study of a project that I worked on with a previous client. I'll walk you through the actual business model in terms of financials and how it looks in the bigger picture of a development. And I'll show you a current project that I'm personally invested in, just to let you know that I've got skin in the game and this is something that I truly believe in. What you see on the page is an actual site plan. It basically is just an outline of a building on a property. It shows you the dimensions of the building, a basic landscaping plan. It shows you the dimensions of each floor, how many square feet are going to be allowed to be built on each floor, and the overall size of the building itself. It also establishes how many units are going to be in this project. What we're aiming to do is acquire sites and get something like this approved for that particular site. So it could be eight units, 10 units, 16 units, depending on the site, the variables will change. Effectively, we're looking to get the site approved to this stage. Once we reach that milestone, we're able to then sell it to a builder because they have certain guarantees. There's a whole bunch of other work that goes into getting it to this point and a whole bunch of other studies and design efforts that have to be done. But effectively, this is the end result. So why would a builder want to purchase a site plan approved opportunity? Why would they want to buy a site with this paperwork, this process already completed? Well, essentially, we're fast tracking the development process for them. We're not inventing something new here. Everything we're doing is part of the development process. What we're simply doing as an investor is making an exit before we put a shovel in the ground. We can create an elevated value by getting this approval process done and then make an exit and move on to our next project. 
Effectively, we're saving a builder up to two years of time by going through this process, working with the consultants, getting all the studies and reports and preliminary drawings done. We're getting something done that's part of the development process. It'll save the builder time. They get to step in at the end of this process and basically begin construction within months. It guarantees a building permit. When we get site plan approval, it guarantees the builder can move forward. All they have to do is finish the final working drawings of the site. Those are the drawings where they make specific choices about the project. They make design choices, they make uh, material choices, they make layout choices. These are specific things that the builder will choose to do uh, to their uh, you know, specifications and, and to their brand. We don't need to get into that. We're simply building it up to the point where the paperwork is done and handing it over to the builder to make those final choices. We're removing the capital risk from the builder to get it to this stage by acquiring the site, by paying for the soft costs for the consulting fees to get it to this point, the builder doesn't have to put the money in to do that. They can focus on other projects. They don't have to spend their time or their money to get it to the point where it's site plan approved. One of the other attractive features of this business model is that because we're focusing on the multifamily sector of six units or more, which qualifies as commercial, the CMHC, the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, offers really great incentives and financial packages for these types of developments. So, for example, a building that's a new construction could qualify under the right circumstances for up to 50 years amortization. That helps reduce the monthly payments by a substantial amount. This special insurance that the CMHC gives to lenders also reduces the interest rate of the owner of the property. So when the builder completes construction and they pay off their building loan and they secure a conventional loan with this insurance, their interest rate will be very low, much lower than a conventional mortgage. That mortgage can be passed on to the next owner of the property, someone who might buy the finished project with tenants in place. In so, the next series of slides, I'm going to walk you through the actual business model and some financial illustrations to show you what a project looks like from start to finish. You don't have to be a millionaire to participate in these types of projects. Um, it's something that you can do with some savings or in a small syndicate or group of people that are like-minded and want to participate in a project together. If you do have some greater financial means, you could actually do a series of projects and create a pipeline of opportunities for yourself so that you can have a passive income. As each project comes to fruition and you're paid out, you can get paid out more often by participating in these types of projects rather than buying and holding properties for many years. So over the next series of slides, I'm gonna illustrate how you can make up to 50% return on your investment over the life cycle of a project. I'll walk you through that life cycle and what your expectations can be. We'll talk about the risks and how we mitigate those risks by making very careful choices in this business model. And I'll just reiterate that this really is the type of venture that you can repeat over and over. As you get paid out from each project, you have the option of reinvesting into another project. If you do have some financial means, you have the option of creating a pipeline of projects for yourself. What you see on the screen right now is information about a project that I was fortunate enough to participate in last year in 2022. Uh, I had a client come to me. They had already achieved site plan approval for an infill project in Ottawa in a neighborhood called the Glebe Annex. They purchased the site in May of 2020 for $730,000. And they went through the process of getting an eight unit apartment building approved to the site plan stage. Uh, once that was done, they asked me to sell the property. And so we evaluated it in terms of its finished value as a completed project. So we imagined as though the building was built with tenants and we applied the income approach to valuation to figure out what the fair market value of the site would be at that time. And then we reversed engineered the entire project to figure out what a fair value is on the land. We have to leave enough meat on the bone for the buyer who would be the builder to be incentivized in order to want to purchase this project. And the results were truly fantastic. What you see now are some renderings that were done for the project. When we go through this process, part of the work involves conceptualizing what the highest and best use is for the site to try and maximize its full potential and squeeze every dollar out of it. So these are some of the renderings that were done. 
um, we were able to sell the property for $1.25 million in roughly 90 days. So you can see from the time that they purchased it to the time that they sold it, the property value went up roughly $500,000. Oh. And so here you see again, the site plan that was created for this property. And we also had floor plans, which came along with the design. The floor plans were really essential to help us determine the valuation of the project as a finished entity. So based on the floor plans, we could extrapolate what fair market rents would be in that particular neighborhood. And then using the income approach, determine what the value of the finished building would be to reverse engineer it, as I talked about before. We had the floor plans for every floor. So you see the basement, you see the ground floor, you see the second floor and the third floor, which were basically identical floor plates. And there was an additional drawing done for the roof. Now that you have a general understanding of what we're trying to achieve and you have some information, you've seen a case study of a particular outcome, let me walk you through the business model uh, in more detail. So the scope of work should take place roughly over a period of 18 to 24 months. We're going to acquire a property for this work. It's going to be an income producing property. So something like a duplex or a fourplex, something that has good zoning, that allows a higher and better use than what's there now. We're going to try and build something to scale. So it's not going to be taking a duplex to improve it to a fourplex. We're looking at building a low rise apartment building. So eight units, 10 units, 16 units, whatever we can achieve on the site that is acquired. The timeline to acquire the property is typically 60 to 90 days once we identify the candidate sites. And that's part of the scope of work that I'll be doing for you is bringing you candidate sites. The next stage is the design and approval process. This is where various consultants are hired to do uh, different sorts of studies and reports about the property. An architect will be engaged, a designer will be engaged to come up with renderings and floor plans. And so that's where I act as your project manager through this process to achieve the highest outcomes for the site. And the last stage of the process is to sell the site, site plan approved. We can actually start the marketing much earlier. Once we have a feasibility study, some renderings and floor plans of a concept, we can actually evaluate the entire project and come up with a fair price on the land and start advertising it for sale. So this is just a quick recap of the scope of work um, in terms of how it all fits in the timeline. So essentially we're doing site selection, we're doing the acquisition of the site, we're going through the phase of reports and studies and working with experts to come up with conceptual drawings and floor plans for the site to achieve highest and best use. Then we go through the application process for municipal approval and we sell the package site. Let's talk about site selection and risk mitigation and how it all kind of fits together. So essentially we're looking for candidate sites that are income producing. We're not looking for land, raw land, Land is basically uh, not income producing. So it's very difficult to get a mortgage. You have to buy land in cash. For a much larger developer, much larger investors, that might be something they're interested in doing. And they could go through some significant zoning changes and severances or create a plan at subdivision. For this particular model, we're trying to mitigate our risks and make certain choices. So we're looking for income producing properties, something that could be duplex or fourplex, like I said earlier. And that will enable you to get a mortgage because you'll have some revenue on it. And so you only have to put the minimum amount down as a down payment in order to break even while you hold the property throughout this process. One of the other criteria is to ensure that the property has municipal services. Specifically, we're looking for sites that have water and sewer connection. We don't want to go too rural because those sites generally require well and septic, and that would prohibit us from scaling up. So building a small or low rise multifamily building would be more difficult if we had to go with well and septic. We get, again, we want the zoning to have a higher and better use than what's there now. We did talk about that. And what I'm noticing in my opinion is that secondary and tertiary markets, in other words, smaller towns around the bigger city seem to be quite attractive. There are generally more opportunities. Uh, there are infill opportunities where the zoning is good. The cities are generally more receptive to business in terms of the timelines. Things can go faster and the cost for applications is generally lower. So 
there's some really great opportunities in growing markets and growing towns and, and, and small cities around Ottawa and Eastern Ontario that could be really great candidates. And in fact, I purchased one in a, in a town called Prescott, which is just on the St. Lawrence. And I'll, I'll illustrate that to you a little later in the presentation. Again, we're looking for sites that you can scale. So ideally a third of an acre or larger, we wanna build eight units and significantly more if possible. These are the risk mitigating criteria that are built into this model so that we streamline the process and get you in and out of a project as quickly as possible with the least amount of risk. So one of the things that we're not going to do is apply for zoning changes or severances. Some larger developers might be comfortable doing that using their own money and spending the time if they're building much larger projects or trying to build a plan of subdivision, for example. But for us, we're just trying to get you a really great return on your investment in the fastest time possible. So we want to avoid any possibility of the municipality denying an application and the cost that we'd be spent and lost through that process. So no zoning changes, no severances. We're not going to do final working drawings. Like I said, we're going to take it to the site plan stage and then the builder would then step in and do the final working drawings. And those are the engineering drawings, the mechanical drawings, the particular materials and siding and interior finishes. Those are the builders uh, choices that they'll do when they submit their plans for building permit. We don't want to do that for a number of reasons. Firstly, it can cost you know, $75,000 to do a full workup of professional drawings. And an experienced builder might already have some drawings from a previous project that they could simply adapt to this site, the site that we're selling. And so it won't cost them $75,000 to make those updates and adapt it to this particular site. They may also not like the choices that we have done uh, in our design. So it could be a complete waste of time, complete waste of money. So it's best to just let it stop at the site plan approval. When the builder buys the site, they can work with their team to create final working drawings and submit that to the city for a building permit and put a shovel on the ground. One of the things we're going to do to mitigate uh, any liabilities is keep the project management separate from brokerage. So we have a separate company set up for the project management. Project management is not brokerage work. We're not trading properties through the project management company. So we're gonna keep that separate. And when it comes to the project management, we're gonna ensure that no money goes through the project manager. So normally most project managers will take money from the client and then distribute that to service providers. So they're a pass through. In this particular case, this choice is made to try and mitigate your risk and have some transparency. So the contract for the project management portion of this work uh, requires that the funds for the soft costs for the consultants will be placed with a chartered accountant. And you will authorize that account to disperse funds when services are rendered. So at no time will the project manager be responsible or in contact with your funds. Uh, there'll be no kickbacks from service providers, complete transparency 100% of the time. And in the project management contract, there are exit clauses for you to terminate the process without cause. If you decide to change your mind after some time and want to keep the site, then there is simply a buyout formula for the time spent on the project to that date. And if you decide that at the end of the process, when the site plan has been approved, that you want to potentially develop the site or keep it, then there would be a buyout formula at that time as well. So there are mechanisms for you to terminate the contract if you wish. Now I'm going to walk you through a full project by the numbers. So I'm going to use a hypothetical amount and show you how it fits into the scope of the project from A to Z, incorporating all of the different players who would be affected by the project. So that's you, the investor, and the builder who would buy the project, and eventually the final buyer who would buy the completed project as an investment. So we're gonna use $260,000. And like I said, you don't need to be a millionaire to do this type of work. If you have this amount of money, uh, you know, a typical project might cost between three to four hundred thousand uh, dollars. It could be a little less if we find something uh, with a candidate site where it makes sense. But this is the type of money that you're looking at for a small project. 
So either you can do it on your own or invite people to participate with you and create a syndicate. If you do have greater resources, you could, like I said, spread your money over a number of different projects so that you have a pipeline of opportunities going at the same time and get paid out as things come to fruition. So here's an example based on a $260,000 investment. What we're doing is we've acquired a site that is income producing and it allows us to build a 16 unit apartment building. They're all two bedroom apartments and they're all hypothetically going to be rented for $1,800 a month for each unit. Okay, so let me walk you through this illustration. We'll start on the far left side of the screen on the first stack. This is the initial property value of the property that we're purchasing for this project. So we're looking at an $800,000 purchase price. And in this case, the property is producing a revenue uh, enough that it'll break even with a 25% down payment. And the property could be a duplex, fourplex, something like we talked about before. It doesn't have to be in great condition because ultimately it's going to be a tear down and it's going to be replaced by a larger building. So we generally don't really care about the condition of the building just so that it can basically sustain itself during the holding period. So we're going to buy an $800,000 building. You're going to make a 25% down payment of $200,000. You're going to secure a mortgage and you're going to own the property. I'm simply a hired gun, so I have no stake in the property. It's entirely yours. The next step is to pay for the soft costs. So this project is budgeted to be between fifty dollars to $60,000 to do a small project. So this amount of money is in addition to your down payment and your closing costs to acquire the property. So you'll need that $60,000 to pay for all the consulting fees. That money, like I said, will go to your accountant and be distributed um, as required when services are due. We have an accountant lined up for this work, uh, but if you have somebody that you'd like to use, we can certainly work with them as well. So your total cash invested will be $260,000 with the closing costs. And basically what we're going to do through this process is increase the value of the property by about 25 to 30%. That's all. We're not doubling the value of a site. We're not tripling the value of a site. It's not feasible. It won't work. It won't be practical within the scope of the entire development process. There are many other costs involved to get the project built. So it's not a reasonable expectation to think that you're going to double the value of the site. I'll show you in the next slide that it's, it's basically impossible, but you are going to add about 25 to 30% of value to the site, and it's going to give you a great return on your investment. So from $800,000 after the 18 months to 24 months of this process, we're going to increase the value of the site to $1.1 million. It's also worth mentioning that during the holding period, as you have tenants paying the operating costs and your mortgage, you will be collecting equity into the property. So you'll see in the future property value stack, a small section there that says equity. That is the reality. It's not a ton of money, but it is worth mentioning because you are holding the property for that period of time. So all that equity, whatever is earned during the holding period, you are entitled to that because you own the property. So that's part of your investment as well. Okay. And then we're going to sell it. So you're going to list it. We're going to act as your agent and we're going to list the site for sale, like a standard real estate brokerage transaction. There'll be a 5% commission on the sale of the site. And that'll be deducted from the purchase price. And so once the sale is uh, accomplished, you'll recover your initial capital of $260,000. The real estate deduction will come into play at 5%. You can see there, there's a $55,000 deduction for real estate fees. And then you see in the last stack, the proceeds of the sale. Those proceeds are then split between the project manager and the investor. And I'll walk you through how the fee structure works. But Basically, the fees don't come into play until the project is sold. So that's another area of difference between a regular project manager and what we're doing. And now let me zoom in just to recap the total investment in this scenario. Your down payment is $200,000. Your soft costs are $60,000. So you're all in for roughly $260,000. You do collect some equity during that time, roughly sixteen dollars to $17,000 in this scenario. And then your proceeds from the sale are around $201,000. And then those proceeds are split between project manager 
and investor. And the ratio is 30% to the project manager and 70% to the and so here's how it breaks down in terms of the return on your investment over the course of this project. You have invested $260,000. The proceeds are approximately $201,000. The split of those proceeds is 30% to the project manager and 70% to the investor. You can see the $141,000 is what you would earn at the end of this process. It's slightly above 50% return on your investment. So if the process is 18 to 24 months, that's roughly 25% annualized return over the duration of this project. You can see it's very high and certainly more than you would make in a bank or a mutual fund and certainly more secure. Because Now I'm going to contextualize the entire process for you and how the parcel of land that we've created a site plan for and gotten approved how does that fit into the overall development of the property if we're building a 16 unit apartment building? Now, again, we're not building it, but we've had it approved and the builder is going to take it and put a shelf in the ground. So we have to contextualize everything to make sure that we evaluate the site appropriately and leave enough meat on the bone, enough profit incentive for a builder to want to buy this project from you or from us. So let's start in the middle stack of this slide and i'll explain how everything fits in so right in the middle you'll see this is the development costs the first layer of the stack is 1.1 million dollars if you'll recall our property value was 1.1 million dollars and we know how we got there that's the property 1.1 million dollars is the property represented in that first stage of the development cost stack the next level up is the final working drawings. Remember we talked about $75,000? Well, that's generally the cost of doing full working drawings for a project of this scale. The next stage up is the $200,000. Those are the development fees, municipal fees that are charged in order to get the building permit. On top of that, you've got the actual construction. And so these numbers have been vetted by experienced builders. And essentially to build a 16 unit apartment building with average quality finishes and stick frame um, design with uh, much of the infrastructure design so that the tenants pay for the heating and, and cooling if there's cooling, uh, that all the infrastructure costs, electricity are put onto the tenants as they normally are in income producing properties, that the construction cost for this type of build would be approximately $165,000 per unit. So you can see the total production of this development is roughly $4 million. What happens is the builder comes in and when they buy the project from you, they are getting a construction loan. So they're going to put down roughly 25% of the total cost to build the project. So from 4 million, they're going to put approximately 1 million. So you look in the left column, the left stack, that's approximately the builder's cost to acquire the site from you and take the loan and build the project. So they're taking a 75% construction loan to get this project in the ground and built. Once the project is completed, they're gonna need to pay off that construction loan. So they're gonna get a conventional loan with the CMHC insurance. Remember we talked about that earlier on in the presentation. This type of building qualifies for that type of program. So they're gonna get the CMHC insurance their lender is going to pay off their other lender who's given them a construction loan. It's typically not the same lender. And then the lender who's giving them the conventional loan with the CMHC insurance is going to be giving them a loan at a much lower interest rate. So it incentivizes the builder to do it and they can hold on to the asset until they sell it. And they're basically have a, a high cash flow with a low interest rate um, through this process. Now you can see in the final valuation on the far right side, this is where the value of the property sits um, once it's evaluated from the income approach. And so you can see based on whatever cap rate you apply at that time, that the valuation is going to be greater than the cost of construction. Now, in order for this to work, it has to be greater. There has to be enough profit motive for the builder to want to buy this site from you in the first place. So in this particular case, it's a new construction, generally new construction 
gets a lower cap rate valuation and they're eligible for these longer amortization periods so that the monthly payments on the mortgage are much lower. So in this illustration, based on the revenue of $1,800 a month that we talked about, the value of this building is gonna be roughly $4.8 million. So you can see from the time that the project was built and from the time to the time that the project is completed, the equity is roughly $800,000. So there's an instant equity in the property once it's evaluated from the income approach. Now that $800,000 is the profit incentive for the builder to want to buy this project and do this work in the first place. They've invested a million and now they have an equity of $800,000 into the building once it's complete. They can decide to keep it and allow it to continue to appreciate in value, or they can sell it to another investor and make their exit and they would have made a healthy return on their money too. Here's an illustration of the difference between a traditional buy and hold investment of a multifamily building and working through this process of site plan approval investments over a period of six years. What you have here is using the $260,000 investment that we used in our illustration applied to a acquisition of a traditional multifamily building. The blue line represents that buy and hold over a six year period. And each dot represents a sale point. If you were to sell the building at that point in time, after acquiring it, these are the expected proceeds of a sale. <clears throat> the blue line takes into account the two and a half percent rent increase that is permissible under the cost of living allowance uh, regulations in Ontario. So the rent is going to go up two and a half percent a year, and it also accounts for the principal pay down uh, that you accrue through the rent payments. And each marker um, also accounts for a 5% real estate fee. So if you were to sell the property, add your increase in rent, add your equity and deduct a 5% real estate brokerage fee on the sale of the property, each blue dot represents the proceeds of that sale over a six year period. So you can see after six years of ownership, if you were to sell it, you can expect roughly 68 to 70% return on your investment, which is pretty good. That's a traditional investment. Now contrast that with doing a MyBell development uh, site plan approval investment strategy over the same period of time, you can see that we could conceivably do three projects during that same period of time, reusing the same money. The difference is you get paid out at the end of each project. You recover your initial funds plus your proceeds. So in my mind, this is a very compelling reason to strongly consider going in the direction of doing site plan approval projects over the same period of time. You're simply going to accelerate your growth. If you recall, I mentioned at the top of this presentation that I became personally motivated to invest in this space and undertake a project after working on my client's project last year. So I found a site that met all of the criteria that we've talked about in this presentation, and I purchased it in June of 2022. The site I bought is a fourplex in the town of Prescott. It's about an hour south of Ottawa on the St. Lawrence. And the reason I bought it is because it met all the criteria. So it was right in the downtown core. It have, has core commercial zoning, which allows for a higher and better use than what's there. Um, the building is a two-story, four-unit building, all one bedrooms. And all the buildings around it, you can see in the map, they're all three stories. So there's a precedent in the neighborhood. And those buildings all have the same zoning. Here you can see the breakdown of the acquisition. I purchased the site for $675,000. I put $164,000 as a down payment and it is cash flowing slightly positive, which is what I want for this transaction to just break even basically with a slight, slight surplus every month during the holding period. And now I'm going to go through this process of acquiring the site plan approval with the extra costs of paying for the consulting fees. So my expectation is to be able to achieve roughly 10 to 12 units once this uh, process is done and then increase the value of the property from 675 from the date I purchased it to roughly a million dollars. So I've reached the end of the presentation. I'm just gonna quickly recap uh, some of the advantages of choosing me and this particular business model 
for you to invest with rather than going with a traditional project manager. Um, firstly, uh, this business model is basically designed so that I work for free until we sell the project. There's a $10,000 retainer once you sign the project management contract, and that money would be deducted at the end of the project from the portion of my project management fee when the property is sold. So I'm in it with you until the very end, and I don't get paid until you get paid. And so you'll know that I have a vested interest in creating the absolute best outcome for the property, for you and for me. And so that we can build a relationship together and hopefully do many more of these transactions over the coming years. Traditional project managers will charge you a fee of roughly $75,000 for a project of this scope, and they'll expect payment at milestone intervals or biweekly throughout the entire process without any vested interest in the outcome. And they don't have any experience on the real estate side. They don't have any experience in valuing properties and sourcing sites and really understanding the scope of what's involved in trying to get the highest and best use out of a site. They're generally just given a scope of work in terms of accomplishing a goal, saying get something approved, but don't really have the perspective that comes with nearly 18 years of real estate experience. So I think I'm in a good position to offer you a comprehensive service in terms of the brokerage work to acquire and sell the property when the time is right. And in the interim to act as your project manager and get this job done. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I hope it was compelling. And if you're interested, please contact me. I'm looking to build a new client base. I'm always looking for new opportunities to build relationships and to work on new projects. That's the life of a realtor. It never ends. Um, one project starts, one project finishes, and we're always looking for our next opportunity. So if you're interested in going down this path in building your wealth in this space, give me a call. I'd be delighted to meet with you for coffee, or we can talk over a conference call, Zoom call, and let's get it done. I'm here to help and hope to work with you. Take care and thanks for your time.